1340-96.5 KVGC. On the phone, Douglas Viviani of Everything Old is New Again. Tonight, he and David Cohen, co-host the show that examines our pop culture, where it came from, why it's still popular, and uh, make radio fun again. And I still haven't remembered the new tagline. So, oh, we um, take a nostalgic look to the future. There we go. Take a nostal- uh, take a, taking a nostalgic look at the future. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna put well, that to so. the future. If that really means okay. anything, but yeah. All right. Hey, I speaking like that. of that, uh, good. Does that make any sense? I don't know if it even makes any sense. <laughs> <laughs> good show last week. Oh, thank you, thank you very much. Uh, what was it? It was uh, Star Trek. Um, what's his name? The uh, Oh yes, Nicholas Meyer. Nicholas Meyer. Yeah, 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 yeah. That was something, huh? Yeah. No, I like that show. That was. That cool. was yeah, he was. I just was. Sometimes you're amazed at the people that. Uh, <laughs> that That'll say, talk yes. to you. <laughs> it's like it's like going to the you know to the bar when you were younger and you you say I really don't want to ask that girl or to buy her a drink. She's I don't know if she's going to say yes. I'm a boob and she's <laughs> a tremendous, beautiful, talented woman. And then they say yes, and you're very shocked. Yeah. You know. Hey, so how'd the uh, how'd the memorial weekend go? I know you had plans uh, to do a lot of stuff. Did it all? Transform. Yes, we did the bottle rockets. Leo was happy with that. We, you know, if you remember, we, we uh, he built the bottle rocket. He had kind of show and tell t- Friday. He had in school. And he poured his bottle rocket in, and it was a big hit. People were getting a kick out of that. And then, so that was it. Was all downhill from there for me. <laughs> then we get in the car a Saturday to, to Monday, and we're going down to the Jersey Shore and the traffic and whatever, and that's fine. And then I go, and so we're basically going to the in-laws. Okay. And uh, it's a small house, and they're very, very generous and very gregarious. But the question is, what in the world to do down there? So I made sure that I, I, I bought, like, a special ground coffee with a lot of caffeine and a lot of flavor. And I pretended to bring that as a gift so that we could try this new coffee from Long Island, you know, homemade stuff. Sure, sure. Meanwhile, I really needed that coffee left and right just to keep me awake through the inane conversation of uh, of the of the day. I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but uh, I don't know. I try to get them to, I, to do stuff like let's let's go out. Let's let's I don't know. They, he, they live by Mammoth Racetrack, so I'm like let's. There's a a, a, a race that's going on, and they're going to have these. These food trucks there. There's a festival. There's going to be 40 food trucks. Let's wow. go and do that. No, we don't really want to do that. All right, let, let's, let's just the idea is to, to try to get out and change the subject a little bit and do something, you know, instead of just wa- like basically sitting in a circle watching the kids, you know. Um, but it turned out that the kids uh, ended up painting on easels in the backyard. They stomped rockets. If you see this thing, you stomp on something, the rocket goes up in the air. They played that. They did some gardening. They went. We did go to a water park, but uh, boy, it was... How do I say this nicely? It's one of the longest weekends of my life. <laughs> Boring <laughs> would be too nice. <laughs> yeah, maybe I shouldn't have brought the coffee because I, maybe well, it would be easier if I was that, that guy that just fell asleep on the couch. But how often do do those grandparents get to see their that's true. They see them maybe once a I would say on an average once a month, maybe a little bit less. So how far so, was that trip? It's a, um, with, you know, the problem is it's about 90 miles. Uh, so, you know, we figure an hour and a half, two hours. But getting through New York City during that holiday is a oh, real drag. So oh, it took us basically mm, three and a half hours each way. Are you so kidding terrible. me? No, what do you mean terrible? That's hard. See, here in California... At least in our part of California, you know, to go from here to you know to go sixty miles takes you just under an hour, right? You know what I mean. And if right. we have to wait at a stoplight for you know two times, it's like, gosh, the traffic's bad today. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we have a different thing. We got to go through uh, all of Long Island, and then we got to go through Queens, and we got to go through Brooklyn, then we got to go through over the bridges uh, to over Manhattan into Jersey. Uh, then so once you're finally free of all of that, and the city's behind you, you know it, it is smooth sailing on the on the highway. But boy, what a what a project! I was what just a project. I was going to say we have only three stoplights in the city here, but I believe we have four now. Let me see, 
one at French Bar, one at 88, one at Maine, and one at Sutter. Yeah, yeah, we have four stoplights. And gosh, sometimes. So we, what are the what are the, the sheriff or the police do? They do they hide behind one? And, uh, oh no, they, no, everybody, you know, everybody stops at them. It was hard at first. Hard at first, you know, when they pop these babies up and you're used just to whipping through town. But. Well, you know what they have now? They've got these cameras here by us. Oh, yeah. yeah uh, we, you, you've heard of this routine. Oh, yeah. We haven't been stocked it in Sacramento. And all, uh, you know, I mean, half the know. time they're wrong. I swear to goodness, they're wrong. They, you, you, made the, you stopped and made the right on red, and you're still getting it, you know? Do you have um, there where you can go through the tolls where there's just like a, yes. like a QR code on your car and you zoom, go yep. right through it? And, yeah. Not happy with that either, because if you don't have the easy pass, uh, you know, you, you, they charge your license plate and they send your bill in the mail, which inevitably gets lost and forgotten about for mm-hmm. $8 or whatever. And then, you know, six months later, it comes in a red envelope. And six months after that, they threaten to, to, to uh, you know, pull your registration for $8. And six months after that, it turns out to be a $500 fine, you know. So <laughs> you really got to pay attention to these things. And so what a drag. And they're looking at such... This is real scary. Uh, they're looking to charge. Just put those things up everywhere and charge you yeah. twenty cents, you know, for these couple of miles and another twenty cents for the next. So every time you get in a car, it costs you money. I, I think it's absolutely outrageous and beyond beyond Orwellian. If but you had to go story. to court, would you represent yourself or would you get someone else to do it? I'd have to get someone else because I would be so heated and so <laughs> aggravated that I would <laughs> that I'd, I'd be they. they they would put that sign up, you know, with, with my face with a circle and, yeah, a, and a mark yeah. through it. Now, you know, here, <laughs> lawyers, you know, lawyers in our area practice, they go before the same two judges most of the time. Right. You know, do you do you go through, I mean, do you have like a whole circuit of judges? We you go have, through? in Suffolk County, we have, just for the Supreme Court alone, we have, uh, I believe it's 16 judges, Ooh. and they change pretty pretty often. Uh, and then, you know, Nassau County is another court I go to. There have another 20 judges, uh, and that's just the Supreme Court. Then you've got the lower court, so there's a bunch more there. So, I, you know, I've been doing it for 30 years, so I have gotten to know judges. Many of them retired, but I've gotten to know uh, uh, a number of them. And, and then you need to know their law clerks, too, because they're really who you're dealing with. They have people that they meet with the attorneys and conference things before you get to the judge. Many times the judges here are... are just here for the trials, and many times there's not a lot of trials, so you don't see the judge all that much. So you see a lot of the law secretaries, and yeah, they get to know a lot of them all, the, uh, yeah. and see what the, the turnover is pretty big. But um, you get to see them over and over. I would prefer, I guess, yes and no, because what if you what if you you don't get along with one yeah, of the two judges exactly. there, and you get that one judge all the time, you're in trouble, right? Exactly. That's what I, you know, exactly. Yeah, you know, really because, I mean, it, it's just it's just human nature, you know. I mean, everybody doesn't like everybody, and you know. yeah. And if you have that many cases, you're going to be up against them every other day, and you're going to be you know have, having discussions. And by the nature of it, it's going to be adversarial. And you know, if you have a bad day in the morning, or you're late or something, uh, and you're rushing around, maybe you say the wrong thing, and then you get on the wrong side, and now you're in now you're in dire straits for the rest of your career over there. That's true. That's true. Be careful. <laughs> So, anything big planned for the weekend at all? I have uh, very interesting. I, I, I had we we talked about this a little bit. I think it was last week or the week before. Thirty-five year reunion oh, for Providence oh, yes, College. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah this yeah, yeah. weekend, so I am traveling yeah. up there today. That's a four and a half hour trip, and and meeting up with uh, anyone and everyone that will talk to me. And I'm just wondering, like I've kept in touch with, I'm going to say ten, but really five close ones. Um, and friends of mine, and the rest of the thousand people in my class, I haven't. So I just wonder what's going to happen. I'm going to assume they're going to walk around like a, if they if I don't have a name tag, I'm going to walk around and they're going to, I'm going to kind of be like Mr. Anonymous. You know, I I just wonder who's going to remember, who's going to see uh, the face and, and remember 30 years ago and all of this. It may be surprising to, to, to me. I don't know. But have you ever gone to any of these? We haven't seen anybody for like 20, 30 years, and you wonder if they're even going to know who you are. And and I always think I look the same as I did back then, right. and I see them like Jesus. This person's changed. I wouldn't recognize them if uh, you know they walked up with a name tag on. Here. Yeah, the worst thing is when they do the name tag, they put the picture from you yeah. know 1987 or 1984 on it. You know what you ought to do, Douglas? You ought to write uh, instead of Douglas, you ought to write like like David Viviani. 
Just it, uh, just so people will come up and go, David, God, I haven't seen you. Oh, remember how good well, friends you know we were, David? Oh, high David. school reunions. We have two high schools here that uh, uh, the kids go to. with so many different elementary schools that uh, they split up the junior high school. So long story short is a lot of the kids that I knew growing up went to an adjacent high school. Mm-hmm. One was mm-hmm. east and one was west. So they, now it's, it's 10 years later for the 10-year reunion, and I say, you know what, I want to crash the other one. That, not the school I went to, but the one where I know a lot of the kids. So I, I put on a name tag for uh, Sal DeSantis, a, a fellow I knew from <laughs> elementary school. I knew wasn't going to be there. And I walked around like him. Nobody knew the difference. And nobody knew the difference. No. Yeah. Yeah. They knew you I mean, so... the ones that knew me ignored it, and the right. ones that didn't yeah. know me came up and said, oh, man, what a great, good, it was great yeah. to see you. I haven't seen you in 10 years. It's unbelievable. I go, mm, yeah, uh, you know. Right. Try to play it off. Now I know I know your guest this week is going to deal with baseball, but with passing of Bill Buckner, uh, that happened since the last time we visited, I believe, yes. didn't it? Now Bill Buckner, of course, in New York is is uh, revered a hero and uh, sometimes maligned for that play in 1986 World Series where Mookie Wilson hit the ball down to first base and he couldn't bend over and pick the ball up. He had a back problem, and uh, he had to live with that from that point on. Around here, I don't, they, I don't know if they traveled West Coast, but I know around here they have these baseball shows every so often, baseball card shows and their signatures and so forth, autographs. And there's a picture of, of that where it's like a, a picture of Mookie got kind of running and, and, uh, and the ball going through Buckner's legs. And it's such an embarrassment to him, was such an embarrassment and a, a difficult play because, of course, the Red Sox were going to win the first World Series in 100 years or whatever yeah. it was. And, uh, and he had to live with that, and he signed... Everywhere I saw him all the time, he would be signing with a smile. He would talk to people. He was very gregarious. He got over the the problem, I would say, the stigma of that play, and was able to to you know to live in it a little bit. And people, even people in Boston, they hated him for years. But at some old timers game or some event, they brought him back, and they all gave him a standing ovation. And, and well, uh, he was a Golden Glove, I believe. He made. Um, uh, all-star teams. I mean, he, he wasn't a slouch as a player. He was a very good player. Yeah, Absolutely yeah. right. Absolutely. That was the end of his career. He was with the Cubs and the Dodgers, I believe, he started out with. And, uh, yeah, he was, I think, I should look it up, but he, he's around a 300 lifetime hitter. He hit about, you know, 250, 300 homers. He was, you know. What year was, did that happen? What what year? Do you remember? Oh, 86 for the Mets. 86. Okay, so he was, I believe he won the Golden Glove in 81, 82. Or, you know, it was earlier in his, in his career. Yep. Yeah, and he but, was hurt. Uh, he had a back yeah. problem. He couldn't bend yeah. over. Hey, who plays first baseman and, and you're the most healthiest guy on the team? You know? <laughs> exactly. Seriously, that doesn't happen every, you know. That's that's exactly right. That's the position they always put the guy that's, you know, older or has a, especially for DHs. You know, they all win. You know, Homer Killebrew and... Uh, and uh, Hank Aaron, they all extended their career by going to first base, right? Well, with the Giants, uh, Buster Posey is our catcher, but everyone says when he, you know, gets because he's been banged up, you know, had surgeries yep. and so forth, he will eventually play first base because he's a great hitter, and he'll they'll move him to first base. <laughs> Hopefully, like, they tried that with Mike Piazza with the Mets, and he, he couldn't yeah, do it. Yeah, I remember that. It was tough. That, so, so you know, that's where the DH comes in, extends these guys' careers. You know. So who are we? Uh, who are we going to interview this week? Well, I don't know if you remember this guy, but he, on the East Coast, especially a Mets fan in the seventies, he was a relief pitcher for the Mets, and he was a relief pitcher for the Milwaukee Brewers, and uh, and he was uh, pretty well revered. Skip Lockwood is going to be mm. with us, and uh, again, he, he started his career in '65. He went to 1980, so he's in that range there. He actually, after school, got a master's degree uh, from Fairleigh uh, Dickinson University and from M- MIT, another one, really? in the study and psychology of how to win. And, uh, and he's all about uh, showing us, teaching us how to envision what you want to get. Envision the ball game for him. Envision the, the batter. Envision even down to every pitch. Before he went out there, he would uh, uh, meditate and envision what he was going to do, and then he made it a reality. So the book he's got right now is called Insight Pitch, My Life as a Major League Closer, and we'll be talking to Skip Lockwood about that. So that's kind of fun. All right. Tonight at 6 o'clock, tomorrow night at 6 o'clock, taking a nostalgic look to the future.
How's that? See, I remembered. That's perfect. Now, if we could just figure out what it means. <laughs> Everything old is new again with Douglas Viviani and David Cohen. Douglas, have a great show tonight. Thanks. You, you have a great weekend. And have, and, and, and have fun at the reunion. Wear your name tag upside down. I think I'm going to wear the Everything Old is New Again shirt just for kicks. How there about that? Go. There we go.